In this video, I will show you the incredible autofocus performance of the Sony A6700 on countless different animals. We will also do some macro photography shoots of different animals, which is of course a big selling point if you are a macro photographer. I will challenge the Sony A6700 by photographing and filming animals at low light situations and with few contrast in their faces. Three years ago, I bought the Sony A7R4, and one of the reasons was its new feature to detect animal eyes. After testing it a lot, the autofocus of that $4,000 camera was totally crap. It did work on dogs and cats, but that was nothing I was interested in. Another great feature for me was the possibility to shoot in 4K 120 frames per second with additional crop. After cropping 4K to 1080p in post allows me to get 5 to 1 crop in full HD which is awesome for macro or wildlife shots. Let's take a closer look at those videos I took in Austria and Swiss last week. At the beginning of the day, I was pretty upset because I only took my 90mm macro lens with me. At that day, the 200 to 600mm would definitely have been the better choice. But because of that huge crop factor, I was able to capture some remarkable details. I really could not believe how close I could get with five times crop with an ordinary macro lens to film this lynx. As this was filmed handheld, there is really nothing I could complain about the image stabilization of that camera. And even wolves, which were at a distance of about 200 feet, could be filmed with a 90 millimeter lens, which is really remarkable. Sony has implemented a few new features, which allows you to switch between several different algorithms. Now you can switch not just between human and animal, you can also optimize the algorithm for birds, insects, cars, or trains. As my Sony a7R4 failed on most animal eyes, I was really curious if the newer APS-C model really could deliver. Therefore, I have taken images and videos of alpine ibex, fox, lynx, wolves, red deer, squirrel, mice, chamois, boar, and a few others. Unfortunately, I did not have my external monitor with me to film how the focus jumped on the eye of the squirrel. But in the video, you can see that the focus really did a fantastic job here. And again, all videos were shot with a 90 mm lens, which is really impressive. Maybe I will upload a second part with a 600 mm lens to give you more impressions on this camera. As next test animal, I have used mice, which have totally different eyes. As the scene was really dark, I had to shoot at very high ISO, which probably was the reason the focus was lost a couple of times. By the way, this is a harvest mouse, which is the smallest rodent in Europe. Typically, its weighing is only about 6 to 25 grams. Interestingly, these mice have a high metabolic rate, requiring them to eat nearly their entire body weight in food each day to sustain their energy levels. Focus works perfectly on deers. And again, I really like that I can film handheld without any need of a gimbal or warp stabilizer as the camera stabilization of Sony 6700 does a lot better job than my Sony a7R4. One thing that I find really cool is that the focus also works on closed eyes and even when the size of the eye is just a few pixels in size. I am sorry for the shaky footage, but I thought it was still a good idea to film my screen with my phone to show you how the camera is performing live. Next time, I'll take my external monitor with me, promised. This encounter took place in Austria, near Feldkirch, where we visited some friends. This alpine fox is well adapted to the challenging mountainous environment and have distinctive features such as a thick winter coat that provides insulation against the cold. They are opportunistic omnivores feeding on a varied diet that includes small mammals, birds, fruits, and insects. The Alpine Fox is not particularly famous for a specific behavior or characteristic. However, Alpine Foxes in general are known for their intelligence and adaptability to various environments. I could show you a ton more sample footage of different animals but there is really nothing I could complain about. It does work in all animals I have discovered during my trip through the Alps. Now I want to focus on animal eye macro photography. As I have uploaded a ton of videos about eye and iris photography of the human eye, I was hoping to get similar results with animals. As animals keep moving all the time, 
a good eye autofocus would be of great advantage. As I did not want to use a flash, this was quite challenging. The eye autofocus worked great, but only to a certain distance. When I got too close, the autofocus jumped onto the eyelashes, which is no issue when photographing from a longer distance. But then the iris is out of focus. The only chance I had was to be patient or shoot at a lower magnification. The truth is that the best image I took were taken with manual focus. Shooting at 0.5 to 1 or even 1 to 1 magnification with autofocus is not possible. But don't get me wrong, it works great when you want to shoot at a portrait distance. But when you need to capture the details of the iris, there is probably no automated solution possible at the moment. Somehow the algorithm detected the eye correctly, but then jumps on the eyelashes. As the field of depth is so small, the interesting parts of the eye are blurry this way. As I still regret to waste so much money on the Sony A7R4, I must admit that I am really happy with the new Sony A6700. I have not tested all features yet, but it is a great camera for macro photography and video, especially because of that 4K 120fps crop mode. Let me know in the comments what you think about this camera and what samples and tests you would be interested in. Thank you for watching and have a great new year.